Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, a compact gaming laptop from Asus which sports a number of interesting design features and a really stylish look and feel to it. And this is a 14 inch laptop which I initially thought wouldn't be much fun to game on, but actually has been really interesting for a number of different reasons. And this is a review where I'll be talking to you about what my feelings were on this device after using it for a couple of weeks. And I'll be showing you various gaming sessions as well as talking to you about what it was like to use. And I'll include all the information on this device in the description below, including specifications and the different purchase options. I will note, however, that this is the AMD Ryzen 9 4900H CPU sporting variant that includes an NVIDIA RTX 2060 Max-Q GPU as well as NVMe SSD storage and a 1080p 120Hz panel. There is another variant that's available with a 1440p 60Hz display, both of which are IPS displays with 100% sRGB Pantone validated and AMD FreeSync. The initial highlights for this device, as soon as you get it out of the box, is the style and look and feel of it. As I said, it is a portable, comfortable and compact gaming laptop, but it also has this really nice design to it that stands out immediately. It's available in two different color variants. This is the Moonlight White version, but you can also get Eclipse Grey. And it's worth noting that you'll see in a second, the lid of the laptop is also customizable on some models. You can get variants of it that include this anime matrix LED system which includes a thousand LEDs built into the back panel that you can then use to customize with various different displays. You can set animated GIFs, waveforms based on your music, logos and all sorts of other things and it's quite a nice selling point and that variant doesn't have an impact on performance either so that basically means you can create your own star to the laptop. Now being that it's AMD Ryzen powered and that it comes with options that include the lesser GTX graphics cards uh, including the 1660 Ti and 1650 Ti means that you can get this at quite a reasonable price. It starts at about £1,500, $500 and that basically means it's a lot more accessible than a lot of other gaming laptops out of there and yet it still offers some really decent performance. You will note that despite being a compact laptop it's not necessarily that thin. The main body of the laptop is a CNC milled device with a fingerprint resistance to it. It isn't terribly thin though you'll note quite a thick chunkiness to it. It isn't really chunky, it's not the chunkiest I've tried but it's not as thin as others either. That's not necessarily a bad thing because I found with a lot of these thin and light and compact laptops that they often get too hot under pressure or too noisy or a mix of both and the result is a bit disappointing. However the G14 is actually quite a nice balance between being portable and compact but still performing well, not getting too loud and not getting overly hot and I'll discuss what the heat and performance was like a bit later on as well. Here you can see the re rear panel and where the sort of LEDs would be as that perforated section on the lid there. Unfortunately I wasn't able to test this because it wasn't the unit they sent. They sent me a standard one without the LEDs which is a shame because I was really looking forward to being able to show that off and demonstrate what that would be like but unfortunately they've not sent that variant so I'll just have to talk to you about what the laptop is like in general to use. Now you You'll note there are a number of connection options, and I'll talk to you in those in a minute, as well as a fairly compact keyboard design, which is actually not too frustrating. I often find with these compact keyboards it results in a pretty frustrating experience, but actually this one's not too bad. It is backlit with a standard white glow that you can adjust easily from some buttons on the keyboard. There's no RGB lighting here, it's not per key RGB illumination. So if you're looking for that sort of thing, then you want to look elsewhere. I suggest the MSI Raider that I reviewed recently would be a nice option with a Steel Series keyboard, but this one necessarily doesn't need to be overlooked. And if you're not bothered about RGB, then this is certainly one to explore. Here you'll see easy access buttons for things like the ROG Armory Crate and Fan Speed, which can be adjusted 
with a click of a button or within the Armoury software. And that fan speed can obviously go between silent and sort of turbo performance modes to increase performance and improve cooling as you're going. You'll see a compact keyboard design that includes a thin, slightly frustrating enter key as well as a number of function keys built into the F keys that includes a really simple F6 button that allows a snipping tool, which is within Windows, but it's basically a really easy access tool. So this allows for some productivity options that are really convenient to use. Now, one thing I will note that you'll see in a second, as you can see, I've got a dongle plugged in there for a mouse on the right hand side. And I want to talk to you about the connectivity options as we go through here and you'll see that you have options to output to HDMI here and you also have display port connections too via that USB-C connection. That is one of my frustrations with it and I'll talk to you a bit more later on about that because there's no display port mini or standard display port. You do however have this really nice design in terms of an ergo lift hinge. Now when you open the lid the further back you tilt it the higher it raises the keyboard. This results in a comfortable use case if you're using it for working when you tilt that back. You also note the underside lifts up, which means the fans and cooling vents are off the desk. So it gives slightly better performance that way too. There are some odd quirks to the design though that include a lack of webcam. The webcam's an extra purchase. And also you'll note the USB type A connections are on the right hand side alongside another USB C connection. That means if you want to plug in a mouse you then find you're basically getting in the way of the ports and the cables. One thing I did like is the 14 inch screen also comes with this game visual technology that I should switch between various different visual modes and I found that was actually really comfortable. I often find with these smaller laptops that uh, after a short period of time when gaming on them my eyes get tired and achy and I don't want to play on such a small thing anymore and I want to game properly on a bigger screen. I didn't really find that with this laptop. I actually found that I could keep going with it for a long time and I think the visuals are probably something to do with that and the way the display is calibrated and it results in a pretty comfortable and reasonably enjoyable experience for the most part. You will note the bezels aren't particularly small, it's quite chunky at the bottom and at the sides. As I said there's a lack of webcam so you don't have that at the top and it's a bit weird that you have to purchase an extra one. Also the lack of ports I mean you don't have that many options in terms of connecting one. So you do have two USB-C connections so you could probably go with Logitech Stream Cam to plug in there. But later on you'll see that I plugged in a mouse and a headset on the right hand side and that basically fills up both the USB-A connections and then you've only got USB-C options. So there, it's not an incredibly flexible on that. However, it is a compact laptop, so you can't expect too much from it. Another point of note is there is no ethernet connection either. So that means if you want a solid connection for something like streaming or for faster downloads, then you're gonna have problems. However, I will note that my experience with the Wi-Fi connection was pretty solid. It has Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, as well as the option to connect Bluetooth at 5.0 as well. So it's got a lot of good connections. And a solid connection throughout the house and into the gardens. I don't have any problems with the connection dropping or anything like that, even during playing games as well. But if you're looking for a more solid connection, you're hoping for an ethernet, then you're gonna be out of luck again here. However, it is pleasing in a number of areas that includes that long battery life and pretty nice visuals. Obviously the inclusion of the RTX graphics option means you can take advantage of games with RTX ray tracing goodness. I also played a number of different games on it, including, as I said, Minecraft RTX, got Far Cry New Dawn here, Assassin's Creed, you'll see samples from that. Also used it for VR, which I'll show you a bit later on. Now playing Far Cry New Dawn on very high settings it was getting somewhere between 60 and 80 fps when plugged in and gaming uh, which is terribly bad i didn't really notice any issues of lag or necessarily overheating now it did get hot i will note that it did get hot they say that the piping and such is meant to make sure that it doesn't get too hot when you're playing obviously you can adjust the fan speed on the fly if you do find performance is lacking however i did find that the right hand side of the laptop not necessarily near WASD but over the other side did get quite warm after a decent gaming session 
Uh, it's not necessarily a problem and it is something that I've seen elsewhere but it's worth noting. Now as I said earlier on this is the 1080p panel it comes with 120 hertz refresh rate you can get a 1440p option with 60 hertz that option is obviously going to vary depending on what you're after however I did think that the 1080p panel was more than sufficient um, for such a small screen so it does a good job and obviously you have the options to output to potentially two other screens if you have a USB-C to display port adapter and you can make use of the HDMI connection as well so you can output to larger screens if you want to. I actually did as I said find this 14 inch laptop the screen surprisingly capable uh, for gaming sessions perhaps you wouldn't want to do it for hours and hours and hours but I did find that I wasn't getting tired of it and it resulted in some pretty good playtime for what it is for such a compact machine it actually stood up really well as well I think the fact it wasn't driving a particularly large monitor meant that it worked sufficiently to deliver a, a nice experience played numerous different games and the screen as you can see is colourful, vivid and nice and bright too. Even under heavy lighting that I had to use for video it came out looking pretty good and resulted in a nice experience and those game visuals obviously add another element to it. I particularly like for example the eye care one that you can use during the day it takes away some of the blue light and reduces the ache on your eyes as well but you can see something like Far Cry that looks really good with the lighting and all the vivid colours really nice display on such a small little device now as I said I ran benchmarking on this laptop and I use 3D Mark and I'll leave the links in the description so you can see that as well as Far Cry, New Dawn and Assassin's Creed as well. Now uh, Far Cry New Dawn on ultra settings got around an average of 73 FPS, maximum 96, minimum 57 and Assassin's Creed hit 55 frames per second on very high that's a bit more taxing that game but uh, generally speaking the performance was pretty decent uh, playing other games as well as you can see things like totally accurate battlegrounds the performance wasn't too bad nice smooth experience not expecting the earth from such a compact laptop especially one that's reasonably affordable but it did a good job of delivering a nice bit of experience without getting too hot or too noisy and that's one point of note is the speakers are nice and loud to block out any of that external noise too now one of the things I talked about earlier on is the fact that the DisplayPort connection is only available with a USB-C adapter. I had to buy this separately in order to be able to test out the HTC Vive Cosmos Elite headset that I was also reviewing. There's no DisplayPort Mini connection on here which is a bit unusual. Usually you have a DisplayPort Mini alongside HDMI. This one has DisplayPort but only via USB-C which means you have to buy an additional adapter. Bit of a faff, however it's not too expensive and it cost me like seven pounds or something to buy that so it wasn't too bad and then I set it up and tested to see how it would get on handling VR so I played a number of different games including Boneworks that you can see here and a few other ones while I was testing out this VR headset and I tested it out in my office and in the living room as well and it's nice to be able to do VR on a laptop I had a lot of people tell me that uh, you wouldn't do VR on a laptop but that's nonsense because this device is more than capable of handling based on the specs and a lot of modern laptops are also capable of managing VR and having it on a laptop means you have more freedom to move around and with something like the standard Vive Cosmos or the Oculus Rift S you don't need tracking base stations set up and therefore you can just plug the VR stuff into a laptop and game wherever you want to which gives you a lot more freedom around the house you don't have to have a dedicated play space so I do like playing VR on a laptop and this laptop is capable of it as you can see you can see the screen running also it's worth noting that for each of these sessions of gaming I was also using shadow play to record and capture footage as well so you can see it's not only possible to play games with a decent response and a good FPS rate but also to record that footage that you're doing as well so it wouldn't probably wouldn't have problems with streaming and other things too although as I said there's no ethernet connection so you wouldn't necessarily have the solid bandwidth connection that you'd want for something like streaming to Twitch but you can see a nice bit of response when playing Boneworks which by the way is a 
frustrating and difficult but satisfyingly brilliant design game here hand over hand climbing really good interaction of physics game that allows you to immerse yourself in the virtual reality world are really well put together and well worth checking out but i wanted to test out both the headset and laptop and see how well they got on together and the answer is very well indeed now you can see some of the performance scores that i got during testing here that i was talking about with the benchmarking and you obviously can run the games on ultra high settings you will notice the frame rates aren't quite as high so perhaps going for a little lower obviously it's going to vary depending on which variant of the laptop you get but you can see here i'm on very high settings playing assassin's creed odyssey and it's getting just below 60 frames a second which isn't amazing however you know, it is a very good looking game quite taxing perhaps on the system and it is a compact laptop so but it does look stunning too as you can see from the start of the game the visuals there are really nice and that's been one of the points is that it's very nice laptop to use it looks fantastic and i really enjoyed having it around i think that's a good test of what a laptop's like whether i miss it when i send it back and actually i really enjoyed the convenience of having something that was so portable and light that you could just grab it and take it with you to do whatever you wanted to whether that was just going and do some browsing online or uh, some casual gaming or actually working on it or taking it outside and sitting in the garden and using it and the screen's good enough to do that as well in the light too so it works really well basically under all circumstances uh, the only letdown did have probably was with the microphone the quality of the mic apparently wasn't that great when speaking to friends and they could hear themselves with the speaker so you probably will want a headset plugged in and that's one of the nags as I said that you've probably seen as we're going through this footage is that if you plug a headset in and mouse on the right hand side you're then fighting with cables and there's no way to get around that unless you have wireless dongles or headsets that have a USB-C connection that you can take advantage of the USB on the left hand side so that is a small nag uh, on a device that's otherwise pretty decent in a number of different ways. Now going into taking the laptop apart just to see the future upgrade possibilities. Relatively easy to do. There's just a few screws underneath to take off and then once you've got that lid off you can see underneath. You'll note there's space here with the NVMe N2 SSD and you can remove and replace and upgrade that perhaps choosing to install a two terabyte option for example to give you more storage space i would recommend making sure you go for the maximum when purchasing and get that one terabyte nvme ssd because anything smaller is likely to fill up quite quickly and you'll find yourself frustrated by that uh, here you can see the self-cleaning fan system which i actually did note had a bit of dust on it but it's meant to be self-cleaning as well as the single stick of RAM so again that's another thing you can upgrade you can see that you can access mostly everything here including the battery though so it will mean that in future you should be able to change parts out fairly easily all in all a pretty interesting compact useful and good performer I'd recommend checking it out hope you found this video useful let me know in the comments if you have any questions thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.